there we learn let's take a look at 1.1 so we're given qk is equals to x minus 5 multiplied by x minus k and we're supposed to determine 1.1.1 k if x is equals to 2 looks to be quite easy straightforward no complications we have our equation 2k is equals to x minus 5 x minus k we're looking for k if x is equals to 2 so what do we do we have 2k being equals to in place of x we substitute 2 so we have 2 minus 5 multiplied by 2 minus k so let's take a look this will give us 2k 2 minus 5 is minus 3 and then we have 2 minus k so 2k is equals to minus 3 multiplied by 2 minus 6 minus 3 multiplied by minus k plus 3k so let's take plus 3k to the left hand side we're going to get 2k minus 3k that will be minus 1k being equals to minus 6 it should be easy to see that k is equals to 6 that is 1.1.1 1.1.2 let's determine x if k is equals to 2 so this is the equation we are dealing with here let me just give it a tick that is the equation but now the difference is that we are given k and we are supposed to find x so in place of k we substitute 2 and then we try and determine the value of x so we're gonna have 2 multiplied by in place of k we're substituting 2 being equals to x minus 5 multiplied by x minus k so that will be x minus 2 because that's if k is equal to 2 so 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 easy to see and then we have x minus 5 multiplied by x minus 2 let's go and work that out x multiplied by x is x squared x multiplied by minus 2 is minus 2x minus 5 multiplied by x is minus 5x minus 5 multiplied by minus 2 is plus 10 so 4 is equals to x squared minus 7x plus 10 so x squared minus 7x plus 10 minus 4 will give us plus 6 plus 6 is equals to 0 this is what we are supposed to factorize now in order to find x so two factors of 6 well let me say two numbers instead two numbers of which when we multiply we get 6 and when we add them we get minus 7 it should be easy to see that that is minus 6 and minus 1 so x is equals to 6 or x is equals to 1 those are the values of k if or well the values of x if k is equals to 2 so there we go 1.1.2 1 .1 .2. uh quite a unique equation it's the first time i'm coming across an equation like this um yeah it's a breath of fresh air we are used to just factorizing and not really thinking that much even though it is not a difficult question i think it probably threw some people off who don't have their things in order i don't want to cast 1.2.1 1. uh, we have 2x squared plus 3 being equals to 8x we're supposed to solve that correct two decimal places so how do we solve that this question quadratic formula right the quadratic equation but obviously we're gonna skip it because if you've been watching my channel there's no way you struggle with that and if you are struggling with that you're at the wrong place right uh, 1.2.2 something interesting we can actually solve that one so let's take a look let's take a look uh, the square root of 2 multiplied by x plus 10 minus 10 is equal to x minus 12 we can separate isolate this square root right by taking minus 10 to the right hand side so let's do that seems like the most organic step 2 multiplied by x plus 10 is equal to x minus 12 plus 10 will give us minus 2 and then we can square both sides 
on the left hand side when you square so let's do it let's show that we're squaring we're gonna get 2 multiplied by x plus 10 on the right hand side we're gonna get x squared minus 4x plus 4 so 2x plus 20 is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4 so we have x squared minus 4x minus 2x plus 4 minus 20 being equal to 0. So x squared minus 6x minus 16 is equal to 0. Let me just show, let me just see if my math is right. That is fine. That is also fine. Okay, I think <clears throat> everything is fine there. So let's go ahead and factorize and see what we have this is equal to 0. So factors of minus 16, of which when we multiply, we get minus 16. And then when we add, we get minus 6. Should be easy to see that that is minus 8 and plus 2, right? Minus 8 plus 2 is minus 6, but when you multiply them, you get minus 16. So x is equal to 8 or x is equal to minus 2. These are our two possible values of x. But more often than not, in this kind of equations, because we have squared, we introduce solutions to the equation that might not be necessarily true. So we need to substitute x is equal to 8 and x is equal to minus 2 in the equation and see if they both are true. Uh, for instance, let me show you what I'm talking about when I say squaring introduces things that are not necessarily true. Okay, for instance, x is equal to 2, right? Well, right, that's what you're saying. Take a look at this. If we square both sides, we get x squared is equal to 4, right? But if we solve this, we get x is equal to 2 or x is equal to minus 2. So this solution is true here all the time, but it is not necessarily true for the <laughs> for the equation that we started with. x is equal to 2 implies that 2 is equal to 2. But if you square both sides, which is not wrong in math, and then you solve that same equation, you will introduce things that are not, necess that are not necessarily true. Just like x is equal to minus 2, we get it as an answer for x squared is equal to 4, but it is not necessarily true for x is equal to 2. So that's what I mean when, you say, when I say that all the time when we square, we introduce things that are not necessarily true. But anyway, stories. Um, so let's substitute 8 into the equation that we started with. So we're going to have square root of 2 multiplied by 8 plus 10 minus 10 being equal to 8 minus 12. Okay, so let me substitute um, the left-hand side of my calculator. Um, 2 multiplied by 8 plus 10. Okay, they say... This bracket is not on the 8. The 8 is here. So, minus 10. I get minus 4. Let me take a look at the other side. 8 minus 12 is minus 4, right? I don't have to put that in my calculator. Now, let's substitute x is equal to minus 2. We're going to have 2 minus 2 plus 10 is equal to minus 2 minus 12, therefore. Oh, we have something here. Ugh. Old age. Old age. We have minus 10. So let me replace 8 with minus 2. I get minus 6. And this is equal to minus 2 minus 12 cannot be equal to minus 6. There's no way. So x is equal to minus 2 is a solution that is not necessarily true to the equation that we started with. So we have to cancel that one out. Yeah, there's actually a mark for cancelling it out. Uh, that is 1.2.2. 1.2.3, we have 3 to the x. And x minus 5 being less than 0. So, alright, we're looking for the values of x for which this is less than 0. So, you need to be perspicacious and realize that uh, 3 to the power x is always positive. There's no value of x that will make 3 to the power x to be negative. Right, so we can forget about that part. We can just concentrate on x minus five. So when is x minus five less than zero? When x is less than five. When x is less than five, 
that will be less than zero. So there we go. <laughs> that is the solution, right? 3 to the power x does not bother us at all, right? You need to realize that first and then your life will be extremely simple. Okay, that is 1.2.3. What about 1.3? So solve the following equations simultaneously. So we have the square root of 3 to the x multiplied by 9 to the y being equal to 27. And then on the other hand, we have x plus 4y squared being equal to 6. So what can we do? Do we make x the subject of the formula here and then substitute it in this equation? We're going to have 3 to the power 6 minus 4y squared, which will really complicate our lives. But it will be mathematically correct. So let's play around with this equation first. All right. So how can we possibly do that? Okay, so when I have something like this, I'm looking at the numbers that I have and asking myself, can I write them with the same base? It should be easy to see that we can write all these numbers with the same base. 3, well, that's 3. 9, we can write it with the base of 3. And 27 with the base of 3. We want to write them with the same basis so that we can drop the basis and equate the exponents. So square root of 3 to the x is 3 x over 2 multiply by 3 to the power 2 everything to the power y do you see that and then 2 and y multiply multiplies each other so let's just write it as 3 to the 2 y there we go and then 27 3 to the 3 so when we multiply in numbers with the same base right or variables with the same base whatever we can add the exponents so we're going to have 3 x over 2 plus 2y being equal to 3 to the 3. So let's drop the basis and equate the exponents. x over 2 plus 2y is equal to 3. Multiplying out by 2, x <coughs> plus 4y is equal to 6. Okay, let's make x the subject of the formula. We're going to get 6 minus 4y. Okay. Let's say that uh, this is our equation 2 and um, x plus 4y squared is equal to 6 is our equation 1. So now what we want to do is to sub equation 2 into 1. So in place of x, we're going to put 6 minus 4y and then plus 4y squared is equal to 6. So 4y squared minus 4y 6 minus 6 is 0 so this is equal to 0 we take we divide everything by 4 okay uh, every time we get x squared minus y is equal to 0 we pull out y as a common factor so y y minus 1 is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 or well y not x or y is equal to 1 so x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. So let's take a look. If y is equal to 0, x will be equal to 6. Or when y is equal to 1, x will be, not y, but x, x will be equal to. So let's take a look. We substitute, what are we substituting? We substitute 1 there. So it's just... 4 minus 1, so x will be equal to 2. So there we go. Those are our x and y values. There we go. Okay, 1.4. Let's take a look. The solutions of a quadratic equation are given below. State the values of p for which the equation will have 1.4.1, two equal rows. Okay, so in order for this equation to have two equal rows, we need 2p plus 5 to be equal to 0, right? Because minus 2 plus 0 is equal to minus 2 minus 0. So if the square root of 2p plus 5 is equal to 0, then we're going to have two equal solutions, right? So we need 2p plus 5 to be equal to 0. So 2p is equal to minus 5. p is equal to minus 5 over 2. So there we go. We have P. Um, let's move to 1.4.2. 
no real solutions. Well, the square root of a negative number gives us undefined. So we are looking for where 2p plus 5 is less than 0 so that we can get undefined. If we get undefined, we have no real solutions. So 2p less than minus 5. So p less than minus 5 over 2.